it's interesting, you know, we, Tom and I were talking about uh, this film for years, and um, we both have a passion for oysters. <laughs> so we said, what do we call this? <laughs> a passion for oysters. And it's interesting because we, we're interviewing scientists, we're interviewing watermen, and we're interviewing uh, environmentalists that are doing the sanctuaries. And everybody, there's a passion for oysters yeah. every, everywhere, you know, in the science community, in the waterman community, and, and in the environmental community. And in Maryland, we're fortunate that we're trying to do all three. And that's basically what the film is about, is, is the, uh, the sanctuary, the, uh, the aquaculture, and the harvest, the wild harvest. Uh, so that there's room for all three. You know, if, if watermen are in a um, regulated commons, which is something that we, we deal with in the film, and the uh, sanctuaries are in a specific spot and known, watermen think there are too many, too much of it, of course, but that's part of the give and take in the film. Yeah. And the aquaculture, of course, is there's more and more people getting into it, and that we talk about that too. Yeah. Sanctuaries were hard on watermen. You know, the, if you look at um, at Harris Creek, which is now a total sanctuary, uh, the whole creek, um, and that was one of the best oystering grounds in in the whole Top Tank region, and uh, well, you know that that went away. They do have, still have Broad Creek, and Broad Creek. I went out with two or three different oystermen this year or last winter, and they got their limit by 10 in the morning, 11 in the morning. You know, they did really well, either dredging or tonging. So, um, you know, they're getting their limits. Uh, the limits are reduced, of course, because of the numbers of oysters. So they can't just go out and get, it. again, it's a regulated commons, it has to be. I think uh, right now there is a healthier oyster population uh, in the region, in the, the and this whole film was in the chop tank. Mm -hmm. So we were, it's a small universe. Uh, that more younger people got into it. So there, there are more people trying to catch a finite number of oysters. One of the things that we talk about is uh, the history of the oyster and, and you know, it goes back a lot, it used to be crabs were something you did in the summer when you weren't oystering. Uh, it, that was just an afterthought. And then oysters started dying off and then crabs became a bigger part of the, of the pie. Um, but one of the things, the difference between oysters and crabs is uh, there's been a lot more study of the number of crabs with this crab survey that's been going on for 20, 30 years. Um, where they go out in the winter dredge and they figure out the number of young crabs and they have they have the certain algorithms that they're using and all that. Good. It's yeah. been pretty accurate about how many crabs and what to expect for the yeah. harvest. Well, with oysters, we didn't have that. I think it was in, in 2018 was the first assessment of oysters in like 80 years. So they didn't have, um, they didn't know how many oysters. So if you don't know how much, how many you have, it's hard to figure out how to regulate them. I, I just would love to uh, see more oysters in people's lives around here because I just think it's a marvelous yeah. food. Yeah. Thank you. Sure.